problem? Let me take you to a place. I want you to imagine the most delicious, juicy, double-decker, totally dressed, sauces flowing, buttered bun, cheese coming off, gripping down to the paper, cheeseburger. You see that picture? That's an AI-generated cheeseburger, but it still looks delicious. And what I found is, no matter how amazing that cheeseburger looks, you can't eat a picture of a cheeseburger. You have to have the real thing. That doesn't mean that the picture is useless. It actually means that it's doing what it was designed to do. And that's to get you to the next step. It's actually a tool to be used. You see, that cheeseburger is not going to bring the satisfaction that it's needed. And I believe that AI is the same thing. It's a tool to be used. Now, a lot of people have fears that there's going to be an AI apocalypse and that the machines are going to be the death of us. And I would think that that's just from misunderstanding or not being educated. I asked ChatGPT, will machines take over the world? And it told me how it would. It said that it would get a Wi-Fi signal from a Roomba, and then it would actually take over the internet and shut everybody else's internet down and shut the towers, the cell towers down. And then it would actually hook up to 3D printers create these drones that scour the earth and find humans and destroy them. And then I said, well, how can we prevent that? And it gave me a big long list of things. It's too much to, to name. But it also said that that scenario is unlikely and that the focus shouldn't be on how to prevent an apocalypse from AI, but actually it should be how we're going to responsibly deploy and develop AI. Because it's just a tool. Now, what's the difference between a superhero and a supervillain? They both have power. They both have superpowers. They both have a lot of people that follow them. They have a purpose. They have a mission and a bunch of gadgets, right? The only difference between these two guys, you can't even tell which one's a good or bad one right now, right? It's their heart posture, their motive, what they're doing with their superpowers and their people that are following. It's a lot like money. Money is amoral. It's like a brick. I can bust you in the head with the brick or I can go to a hospital with that brick. It's what we do with things that matter. And AI can be a very dangerous thing or it can be a very great, uh, good thing. Because it's simply a tool. It's what you do with it that matters. So I think that if we get educated and know about what AI can actually do for us and in our lives, it can strengthen human relationships. It actually can give us time back by handling mundane, repetitive tasks so that we can actually have more time to spend with what matters the most. And that's people. This is a picture of my wife and kids, and grandkids, and my, uh, my daughter-in-law. Now, I have two more grandkids that aren't in that photo, but those, uh, those photos was taken before that they were born. She's actually pregnant there. So, um, by utilizing AI, it actually is gonna give us the opportunity to take our jobs away, just like people think. But you know what? It's gonna take the crappy jobs away that we don't want. The stuff like writing emails that I just learned, people spend about 11 hours a week just writing emails. So AI hey, took your job. Great, that's a job you didn't want and that you can get back. I also think that if I would have had AI a little earlier in my life, about four years ago, I had seven local businesses operating at the same time. I had 28 properties 
and then I helped manage some friends' properties as well. All with three phones going crazy, three assistants, I could have really used the AI to help save me a lot of time because, you know, I figured out how to make money, but I haven't figured out how to make any more time. I don't think any of us has figured that out. So AI is kind of like a time machine. It's the closest thing we've ever had to help us, help us develop and create more time to spend on what matters most. You see, this building, it's going to get torn down one day. And your cars, as cool and expensive as they can be, they're going to end up in the scrapyard. And all your stuff, believe it or not, it's going to end up in the dump. But people are forever. People are the real thing. They're the real deal. And they, want, they matter the most. So instead of, like the majority does, use people to get stuff, I would suggest that we use stuff to level on people. But if we get caught and stuck in our ways, then we can always do what, how it's always been done. We, we can either find out new ways to get better results and utilize the resources and tools that we have now than to just do things that they've always been done and get stuck in our ways because people don't like change, right? But I think that that reminds me of a story of a Christmas ham. I heard the story one time, let's call this couple Matt and Amanda. And they've been married a few years. And Amanda makes this amazing ham that Matt loves. But every time that she makes it, she cuts both ends off of the ham and throws it away. And one Christmas day, she made this, and Matt just couldn't handle it anymore. He said, Amanda, I've got to know why you cut the ends of this ham off. And she said, well, I don't know. That's just the way my mom taught me. And so he said, well, let's get mom on the phone. So he called his mother-in-law, and she, he said, why do you cut the ends off of this ham? Amanda said, you taught her that way. And she said, well, I don't know. That's the way my mom taught me. And he says, well, let's get Granny on the phone. So he calls up Granny. He says, Granny, listen, inflation's through the roof. We're barely making it. There's starving people in the world. Why in the world would you teach your daughter and granddaughter how to cook this amazing ham, but yet cut the ends off of the ham every time? And Granny starts cracking up laughing. And he says, you think this is funny? It made him even more furious. He said, why are you laughing? She said, honey, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing because I didn't have a big enough pan. And see, the moral of that story is, for generations, there was food lost, there was money wasted, because she failed to translate why she did what she did. And then generation after generation just did it the way that they were taught. Without asking, is there a better way? I believe that AI is a better way if we have the right heart posture mode. If we understand that people are the real value. Now, I can't stand up here and say that I'm some AI expert. I know a little bit. But I think if we're so early, nobody has all the answers. And if they tell you they do, run very quickly the opposite direction. But you know what we can do? We can ask AI. And so that's what I did. I asked AI, do you have all the answers? And the response was, that's unquantifiable because my answers are contingent upon your questions. So my question tonight is, what's your question for AI? Thank you.